Hello and welcome to everybody. Thank you very much for your participation in today's Virtual Satellite Symposia. Today we are happy to present interesting new study results for IoT. Interbeam is an IoT platform technology for various cancer entities and today's webinar will focus on new study outcomes for breast cancer. For breast cancer, there are several treatment options. In patients above 50 years with low risk or elderly patients, IRT is used as an accelerated partial breast irradiation alone as a single dose. Whereas in higher risk patients, IRT is used as a precise boost to the tumor bed followed by whole breast irradiation. Typically, these are patients either below 50 years or patients with higher stages of breast cancer. Today, it's our pleasure to have Dr. Elena Sperg with us. She will focus her presentation on the newest results of IRT applied as a single dose for breast cancer in patients above 50 years with low risk or elderly patients. She is senior physician and head of the clinical trials unit at the Department of Radiation Oncology at the University Hospital Heidelberg Medical Faculty Mannheim. Dr. Sperg's research topic for the last 10 years was IRT in several projects. So, Dr. Sperg, the audience is yours. Thank you for the kind introduction and also a warm welcome from my side um, to the audience. I would like to present you the, um, our data and other data for IRT in breast cancer patients um, for low energy X-rays um, in low risk patients. First of all, I would like um, to introduce the system to you, uh, uh, which we use to apply these low energy X-rays for intraoperative radiotherapy. This is the intrabeam system, um, which you can find here in this figure. And um, we have also different applicator shapes. Um, and here we can use them in different um, indications. We can use the needle applicator for um, doing the kyphor IRT to treat metastasis um, in the spine. We can use the spherical applicator for treatments in the brain, breast, head and neck, and also for abdominal cases. And um, we can use the flat and surface applicator, especially for treatments um, for in skin, for skin cancer, um, lymphomas and other things. But you can also use the surface and flat applicator to treat um, um, cancers in the abdomen and also head and neck. And uh, we also use them for treating sarcoma in extremities, for example, intraoperatively. So let's go into the detail for low energy X-rays um, for intraoperative radiotherapy in breast cancer. Here we use only the spherical applicator. You might uh, find um, the situation here. And when we look into the detail, you can find a very steep dose fall off um, here in the right sided um, figure with a high dose at the surface, which is 20 gray um, in all breast cancer indications, so as a sole treatment or a boost. And this dose attenuates very steep in, in the depth of the tissue. So as a small summary for the general characteristics of low energy X-rays, we um, can say that we have an immediate absorption and attenuation of dose in the depth. We have less penetration of the dose. So hereby we have more protection of organs at risk like heart and lung and um, also the ribs. And uh, we have most of the dose are deposited very precisely in a small volume, which is our target volume to prevent breast cancer recurrences. Um, 
I would like to start with the first PEP protocol analysis of the target E trial. Um, here we presented the data at the ASTRO um, as an oral presentation um, last year in Chicago. And the pur purpose of the study is um, to test um, prospectively accelerated partial breast irradiation in selected patients and especially in elderly patients. Um, and here we also use this risk adapted approach, which you might know from the target A trial. So this means that we have an intraoperative radiotherapy, and then we look at the final histopathology, and depending on this, we decide if we need an additional whole breast irradiation, or if IRT is really the sole and single treatment for this patient. So this is a very individual treatment as well for the patients. And um, here I present you the data from the first protocol analysis um, and our primary outcome is local recurrence and secondary outcome is um, overall survival. Here you might find uh, the inclusion criteria and exclusion criteria. Um, the main thing is that we have small tumors and uh, low uh, risk patients with uh, negative lymph nodes and so on. And here in this uh, trial, because this is a um, trial, special trial for elderly patients, we have included only patients with an age of 70 years or more. And um, here I have summarized you the factors triggering additional external beam radiotherapy. So if you have a look at the final histopathology, you can decide if you need an additional whole breast irradiation and this should be done um, if we have larger sizes of tumor, other histologies like globular cancers, um, small free margins, um, lymphatic vessel invasion, uh, invasion, positive nodes, or multifocal or central lesions. And in this um, study, we have uh, patients from 28 different centers from Germany, France, Denmark, and Switzerland. And enrollment took place um, until 2014. And um, primary outcome and secondary outcome I've already mentioned um, were um, assessed by Kaplan-Meier methods. So let's go into the results. And 73% um, had IRT as a single treatment, and we had um, in 28% um, an additional whole breast irradiation. In the end, we analyzed here 475 cases, as you might find here in the cohort, um, in the concert um, um, figure. And median follow-up was uh, three years here with a range of two to 79 months. And um, we have um, more left-sided breast cancers as usually seen during real life um, accrual of patients. And um, here you might find the patient characteristics in detail. Um, you can see here that this is a low risk uh, population as we indicated to have in this trial. And, um, you might find here that um, in, this, uh, the, um, in this population, we had only a low number of um, adjuvant chemo and so on. So this is really the low risk population that we wanted to have. And um, therefore we have seen only four local re uh, recurrences um, um, for the primary outcome. And um, they occurred 11, 33, 42 and 43 months after surgery and all of these patients had IRT as a single treatment so as an APBI and this resulted in 0.2% uh, of local relapse at 2.5 years which was um, the main outcome here in this first per protocol analysis and we had at this analysis 1.5% after five years um, based on a Kaplan-Meier method. Um, when we go into the details of the patients having a local recurrence, you might find here the patient characteristics um, of these patients. And you see that we have in bold here marked all these patients 
where a risk factor occurred. So all of these uh, recurrence patients had any kind of risk factor in the end and did not have a whole breast irradiation due to different reasons. Let's turn to the secondary outcome. Um, here you can see the Kaplan-Meier um, estimates and the figure here. And you see that uh, we had only a few deaths here during the follow-up, 20 of them, and um, three bre uh, were breast cancer-related deaths and 17 non-breast cancer-related deaths, resulting in a uh, accrual rate of 98.8% at uh, 2.5 years and 91.4% um, uh, at uh, 5 years. So I would like to conclude that um, in this first protocol analysis of the Target E trial, we have local relapse rates that are far below the predefined um, stopping rules. So no, nothing to be uh, <laughs> nothing to be scared about. So um, the current results therefore um, support the risk adapted approach, which we have already seen from the target A trial. Um, at this uh, time point, I would like to say, thank all uh, patients and their families and all participating centers and also our clinical trials unit, uh, which did the huge part of the work um, here in Mannheim. These exclusive new insights on the Target E study show that the precise irradiation in this elderly patient group can avoid side effects. Additionally, the study points out time-saving and convenient aspects for patients and their relatives by avoiding daily trips to the irradiation facility. Time matters not only for this patient group, but it is also important for patients above 50 with low-risk breast cancer. Here, there are also new study results available focusing on the treatment with a single dose, ultra-hypofractionated irradiation. Dr. Sperg, please. In the second part, um, I would like to show you the broader data from the update of the target A analysis from a single center in um, this is an analysis from Mannheim. And, um, you can see here inclusion and exclusion criteria, they are quite the same as in uh, the target E trial, but um, we have here the difference that we have included patients with an age of 50 years or more. So here the population is, uh, bro uh, is broader than um, in the target E trial. And um, we did here an attention to treat analysis and recruited the patients until 2012, where the target A trial was closed. And um, we recruited 184 patients um, with a, bio, uh, a balanced uh, proportion in arm A and arm B. And um, we had um, 38 patients with an additional whole breast irradiation uh, from one, uh, 91 patients um, in arm A. And both arms um, did not differ in patient characteristics, so we had only a small difference in the patients with um, positive um, HER2 um, receptor status, which was much higher in arm A compared to arm B. And median follow-up was um, very mature, uh, we had here 8.5 years, and this was also balanced in arm A and arm B. So we had the same length of follow-up in both arms. And here you can find the primary outcome. And um, this was a five-year uh, risk uh, local recurrence rate, which we calculated. And um, you can see that um, at five years, we have uh, zero events in arm A compared to 1.1% in arm B, which was not significantly different 
And um, in the end, in the whole follow-up, we had um, one recurrence in each arm. So um, both arms had the same number of recurrences in the whole time, but uh, the recurrence of the arm A was very late um, after 70 months um, after surgery. So therefore, it did not appear in the five-year risk um, uh, data. And um, on the right side, you may find the risk of ipsilateral um, in-breast tumors. And uh, this was again 0% um, for arm A after five years and 1.2% um, in arm B. Um, again, here the same effect, you have one recurrence in uh, each arm, uh, but uh, the one in arm A did occur much later, so it is not implemented in the five-year risk rate. Turning to the secondary outcomes, we can see here the risk um, of a metastasis after five uh, years, years, and this was 3.4% in arm A versus 2.3% in arm B, um, not significantly uh, different, and um, overall survival was um, very good with a 94.4% in arm A compared to 93.3% in arm B. Again, not significantly different. So as a conclusion for this analysis, um, I would like to emphasize that this is a long-term follow-up for a broader population, uh, 50 years or more, all of them low risk, um, but this uh, data really consolidate the um, reports from the target A big trial somehow. So we, we can really confirm that even after 8.5 years. And um, as a summary for um, both a prospective analysis, so for target E and uh, target A, we can really fix that uh, we have a very low recurrence uh, rate in elderly patients, but also a low risk um, for recurrences also in the broader population with 50 years or more. And here we have the long-term data. So this is really a mature follow-up um, where, where we can really relate on. And um, we have very good survival data in both arms uh, in both studies and um, these results are in line with um, the non-inferiority of this risk adaptive approach and um, we should um, confirm this approach for early breast cancer patients. And let's turn now to data from the French scientists um, who did an analysis, a retrospective analysis um, of IOT patients um, from different centers and um, inclusion criteria are quite the same as for target A trial um, with the difference again here with the age um, they included um, patients with 55 years or more and um, they recruited patients until 2015 in the end, they had 60 and, uh, 676 cases included, um, of whom um, about one-third received an additional home breast irradiation. Minimal follow-up uh, was 36 months, and the median follow-up was 54 months. So um, again, um, nearly five years of median follow-up a very large um, size of uh, patients, patient uh, numbers, and um, uh, they have seen only 11 um, local recurrences resulting in a rate of 1.7%. And distant tumor relapse was 0.98%. And uh, overall survival was very good as well and um, resulted in a breast cancer specific survival of 98.9% in the end. They also did this analysis of uh, risk factors for local recurrences in their trial. Here, here you can see in the table um, the listing for all 11 recurrent patients and uh, you might find that for all patients with local recurrence you 
have a risk factor, at least one. So um, again, the same effect as we have seen um, in, the, in our analysis from the target E trial. And they also did a toxicity analysis um, and they assessed toxicity with a CTCAE. They have seen um, any toxicity in 20% of patients, here a higher rate in the boost uh, uh, population compared to uh, IRT as a single treatment, as we have seen from different other reports as well. And main events uh, were, uh, were fibrosis and fat necrosis. This is also not really surprising. And what was uh, really good is that they have seen uh, only a few patients, four of them with grade three toxicities, and all of them had an IRT as a boost with additional whole breast irradiation and uh, no patient from the IRT APBI group had grade three um, toxicity. So uh, to conclude from all these analysis for um, IRT in breast cancer with low energy X-rays in, um, in low risk patients, we can say that uh, 50 kV photons are safe and well tolerated in this population and that we should offer this um, risk adapted approach in low risk breast cancer patients. Our last topic is um, IRT for patients with a breast cancer recurrence. And this is uh, somehow a story of uh, way out of mastectomy. Um, so the usual treatment for recurrences in breast cancer is um, to offer a mastectomy for the patients. But some of them do not want to have a mastectomy and um, a breast conserving surgery um, is feasible in these patients. And for these patients with a pre-irradiated breast tissue, we can offer a second breast conserving treatment, including intraoperative radiotherapy. And there are also recommendations available, for example, from the German um, guideline for breast cancer, where um, they state that re-irradiation um, as APBI should be considered in patients where a second breast conserving treatment is possible. So um, this is really something that you can offer to your patients. And um, we have some evidence here from a pooled analysis from the University Hospital Cologne and Mannheim, um, where 41 patients were included, most of them with in-breast tumor recurrences after already having a breast cancer tumor and some of them had a Hodgkin's disease in history and therefore experienced a pre-irradiation. They were also included because also this is something very special uh, and you can face this with IRT. And um, median follow-up was uh, 58 months. Um, so again, nearly five years of median follow-up for this uh, population. Um, we have, haven't seen any a grade three or four toxicity um, within the first nine weeks, so no um, acute toxicities. Um, we have seen that local recurrence uh, free survival rate was 89.9%, as you might find here. And um, this is uh, a totally in, in range with the experiences after mastectomy in recurrences. And this ended in an overall survival um, of 82.7% at five years. So again, quite good result for this uh, high risk population. And only seven patients developed metastasis within the whole follow up. So within the median uh, follow up of five years which was um, a bit some kind of, uh, of surprise for us because this is a very low rate for this high-risk uh, population um, of this recurrence patients. So um, here we can also conclude um, that IRT is feasible in this population and um, it leads um, to a new alternative in recurrences um, in breast cancer 
and hereby you can avoid mastectomy in pre-irradiated patients and offer them a second breast conserving surgery. And this is underlined by our um, long-term results um, for outcome. And we have also seen that toxicity profile is very good. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention and thank you for listening. The target A results show that the single dose with IRT results in low rates of recurrence, also in the long-term follow-up. Mannheim trial center with 0% within five years. Also, the independent French study with 676 cases confirms that the recurrence rate is low with 1.7% as it is also seen in the target E trial with 1.5%. This very good local control shows that the IRT treatment is safe and a gentle treatment with few side effects and a rescue for patients with recurrent breast cancer to avoid mastectomy, demonstrating local precision of intervene. In a practical way, we would now like to show you how the technology of Interbeam can be applied in the UR. As our webinar is coming to an end now, I would like to thank you, Dr. Sberg, for these interesting clinical insights regarding the single dose IRT in breast cancer. It was a pleasure to have you here today. I would like to quickly summarize the key points of today's webinar all together. Local precision. The use of local IRT enables high doses for an increased tumor bed sterilization, as seen in the results of low recurrence rates in target E, A and in the French study. It also spares organs at risk from radiation for reduced side effects. Time matters. Immediate IRT still in UR, prevents tumor reformation stimulated by wound healing after resection. Due to the combined surgery and irradiation in one setting, the patient and their relatives save time for multiple visits to the irradiation facility. Proven performance. The presented four studies of today's webinar are part of the strong and consistent IRT evidence for breast cancer, which will help you to meet future demands based on clinical results. However, the studies presented today were only a small selection of the available evidence for IRT. Currently, many other studies around the world are ongoing and will deliver more results on this exciting treatment option.
Thank you all for dialing in today. We hope you gained interesting insights and you can directly apply into your clinical practice. And if you have any questions, please refer to your local size contact at any time.